Welcome to Hockey Canada's Skill Development Series. This series of videos encompasses the many skills, techniques and strategies that have become integral to playing the game of hockey at every level. In this second part of the series, we're going to cover one of the most important but most difficult skills to master, puck control. Fortunately, puck control is one of the skill areas that players really enjoy practicing. The players can spend the majority of the game without the puck in their stick, so when they do get possession, they need to make the most of it. It's the ability to capitalize on that possession, whether puck handling or passing, that creates great players and great plays. This DVD contains a series of progressive drills designed to develop and improve any player's ability to control the puck. It will help you to better understand, teach, and perform the key elements of stationary puck control, moving puck control, stationary passing and receiving, moving passing and receiving. These fundamental aspects of puck handling will give any player the tools they need to maintain control of the puck in virtually any game situation. Stationary puck control is the key teaching and learning environment for puck handling, even though it doesn't come into play often during a game. Learning and mastering stationary puck handling transfers those same abilities into puck handling while in motion. A key to becoming a good puck handler is having time during each practice session to learn the basics, repeat the fundamentals, and work on some new moves. Stationary puck control. Stance. The puck control stance is very similar to the basic skating stance and it is the foundation for all puck control skills. The player's feet should be shoulder width apart with the knees bent. The upper body leans slightly forward and the head is up. The player's top hand must be at the very end of the stick and the lower hand 20 to 30 centimeters down the shaft. The blade should lay flat on the ice when younger players are first learning to stick handle, they should be allowed to look down to get a feel for the puck. Older players should ideally use their peripheral vision to see the puck. Stationary puck control, narrow. This is a fast short movement used to move the puck back and forth quickly in front of the body. The goal is to keep the hand movements as smooth and quick as possible. Stationary puck control, wide. This technique moves the puck across the entire body, extending to each side as far as the arms can reach. The bottom hand can come off the stick as the puck is moved out wide to the backhand. Stationary puck control, narrow and wide combination. This skill is a combination of stick handling the puck narrow and wide. It can be a very deceptive maneuver in a game situation. Not only does the puck change location, it also changes speed. Stationary puck control, side, front, side. The movement in this exercise consists of stick handling the puck on the forehand side, then to the front, and finally to the backhand side. This can be another deceptive move when trying to beat defenders. Stationary puck control. One leg, left or right. Just as skating is mostly performed on one leg, the majority of the time spent handling the puck is done on one leg as well. The first progression for puck handling on one leg is to perform it while stationary. The player stick handles the puck normally, then picks one leg up and continues to move the puck from side to side. Ideally, the player will perform this transition seamlessly. Players should learn to master this skill on either leg. Stationary puck control, one hand. There are many times during a game or practice when players will have only one hand on the stick, usually their top hand. Initially, performing this while stationary helps players get a better feel for the strength and coordination required for one-handed puck control in motion. 
Practicing this skill is also a great way for players to improve their hand and forearm strength. Stationary puck control, hands together. Although not often used in game situations, keeping the hands together is a method of stick handling that can be used to improve forearm strength. Players will also develop a better feel for the puck when it is handled further away from the body. Stationary puck control, hands wide. As with the previous skill, this is not a typical method for handling the puck, but it will increase coordination and overall puck control skills. This technique really emphasizes shifting the weight from one skate to the other. It also forces the player to slide the bottom hand lower down the shaft to get the puck out wider. Stationary puck control, rotation. The term puck on a string comes from this maneuver in which the puck stays very close to the blade of the stick. The puck slides from the heel of the blade to the toe and then back down the other side of the blade. As players become faster and more adept at this move, it will appear as though the puck never leaves the blade. Stationary puck control, toe drag, side. The side toe drag is a very deceptive move that, when performed successfully, always makes the highlight reels. It requires both hand speed and coordination. The player moves the puck out to the forehand side and turns the toe of the blade downward to drag the puck closer to the body. It is the rotation of the top hand that turns the toe of the blade over. Stationary puck control, toe drag, front. This maneuver is similar to the side toe drag, except in this case, the puck is out in front of the player. Again, the player turns the toe of the blade downward to drag the puck closer to the body. As players practice this, they will develop both speed and a more fluid motion. Stationary puck control, toe drag, side and front. The toe drag, side and front is a combination of the two previous drills, where the player alternates dragging the puck toward the body from the side and then the front with the toe of the blade. As players improve, this maneuver should become fluid and continuous. Stationary puck control. Figure eights, two-handed. Figure eights are designed to give players a better feel for the puck while going through a wide range of motion. The figure eight pattern makes the player control the puck both on the forehand and backhand. Again, the motion should be smooth and continuous. Stationary puck control, figure eights, one-handed. The figure eight one-handed is similar to the two-handed version, except that it's performed with only the top hand on the stick. Practicing this particular puck control skill helps develop better feel and coordination. Stationary puck control, around the body, box. Moving the puck in a box pattern while rotating the upper body is a great method for developing better puck control and agility. The player should be stick handling throughout the entire exercise. Stationary puck control, around the body, triangle. In this exercise, the puck moves in a triangular fashion around the body. The player should focus on moving the puck quickly from back to front, pulling it by the blade instead of stick handling it. Stationary puck control, partner on knees, stationary stick. In this first progression of one-on-ones, one player is on their knees as another player is stick handling the puck while standing. As seen here, Using a stick as an obstacle is an added challenge to help develop puck control. The standing player moves the puck from side to side underneath the stick and performs front to back toe drags around the stick.
stationary puck control, partner on knees, moving stick. In this second progression of one-on-ones, the kneeling partner slowly moves their stick back and forth. The standing partner performs the same puck maneuvers as in the previous drill. Stationary puck control, stick through legs. The stick through legs maneuver, though not often used in a game, should be practiced to develop better hand-eye coordination. This drill also helps players develop a better range of motion in their hands and arms. Stationary puck control, puck through legs from back. This particular skill is normally used to deceive defensemen. The puck is taken out wide on the forehand side and behind the body, and then the toe of the blade pulls the puck back through the legs. The back side of the blade can also be used to tap the puck through the legs. The puck can either come straight through or off the skate and up to the stick. This skill is often used when a player is receiving a pass behind the body. Stationary puck control. Switch hands. This is a great exercise for improving a player's feel for the puck and hand-eye coordination. Stationary puck control. Body stick opposite. Body stick opposite is a difficult skill to master. Initially, it should be practiced while stationary before trying it in motion. The player stick handles the puck and moves the upper body to the opposite side of where the puck is. Once a player can perform this skill while stationary, it can then be done more easily in motion. Stationary puck control, puck scoop, forehand. This is a skill that many players enjoy trying to master. The blade of the stick is laid on top of the puck. Pressure is put on the edge of the puck to tilt it onto the blade. The stick is then brought backward in a circular motion toward the body. Then, with a quick upward rotation of the hands and stick, the puck stays on the forehand side of the blade as it is scooped up. Stationary puck control, puck scoop, backhand. The action for the backhand puck scoop is the same as the forehand, except the puck starts on the back side of the blade. With a forward movement of the puck, along with a quick downward rotation of the hands and stick, the puck is scooped onto the blade. Stationary puck control, puck over stick, forehand and backhand. This is a fun skill that can be done in practice to improve hand-eye coordination as well as range of motion for the arms. The right amount of speed, combined with a smooth arc of the stick, keeps the puck on the blade. Stationary puck control, bounce puck on blade. Bouncing a puck on the blade is a great exercise for learning hand-eye coordination. Although this skill isn't often used, it comes in handy when trying to corral a bouncing puck or knock it out of the air. Stationary puck control. Flip puck up, knock down. Flipping a puck up and knocking it down is another great exercise for developing hand-eye coordination. Stationary puck control, two pucks. Stick handling two pucks simultaneously is an exercise that should be practiced often to develop hand-eye coordination and hand speed. Players should be given time to work on this at the start or the end of practice as either a warm-up or a cool-down. The ability to skate in any direction while handling the puck takes time and practice. Effective passing, shooting and deking depends on the player's ability to stick handle effectively. Now, Most of the skills involved in stick handling while in motion are progressions from stationary puck control skills. 
Players need the free time to skate while handling the puck if they're going to fully develop their control skills. Moving puck control narrow. The narrow drill is a fast, short maneuver used to move the puck back and forth quickly in front of the body. As in the stationary version, the goal is to keep the hand movements as smooth and quick as possible. When performed in a game situation, it can cause a defenseman to look at the puck instead of the body. Moving puck control wide. This technique moves the puck across the entire body, extending the arms to each side as far as they can reach. The bottom hand can come off the stick as the puck is moved out wide to the backhand. This allows the player to move the puck out even further. When done at high speed, it gives the player a greater chance of going around a defenseman. Moving puck control, narrow and wide combination. This skill is a combination of stick handling the puck narrow and wide. It can be a very deceptive move in a game because the puck is not only changing location but also speed. It can often distract an opponent and cause them to look at the puck instead of the body. Moving puck control, side, front, side. The movement in this exercise consists of stick handling the puck on the forehand side, then to the front, and finally to the backhand side. This can be another deceptive move when trying to beat defenders. Moving the puck out to the side can often make a defender think that either a pass is going to be made or that a shot is going to be taken on the goaltender. Moving puck control, open ice carry, forehand. In this drill, players use only their top hand to control the stick. The puck is pushed ahead with the bottom edge of the stick blade. The puck must be out in front and off to the side of the body for maximum control. Straightening the arm at the elbow pushes the puck forward. When players have open ice in front of them, it is better to use this technique rather than stick handle up the ice. Moving puck control open ice carry backhand this is the same as the forehand drill except the player controls the puck on their backhand a player can usually carry the puck wider on the backhand because the control arm doesn't have to cross in front of the body moving puck control open ice carry combination the open ice carry combo is a good exercise to help gain better control of the puck players rotate their top hand to move the puck from side to side. This is a difficult exercise for young players to master, but it will definitely help them develop their mobility with the puck as they get older. Moving puck control, weaving with puck. Weaving with the puck is a skill used many times throughout a game or practice. It is basically a series of glide turns performed with very little stick handling. Moving puck control, one leg, left and right. Since the majority of a player's time handling the puck is spent on one leg, it is important to practice this move by handling the puck on one leg only. The player stick handles normally, then picks one leg up while continuing to move the puck from side to side. Ideally, the player will perform this transition seamlessly. Moving puck control, one leg, left and right, front and back. In this coordination drill, a player balances on one leg and stick handles the puck in front of the body and off to the side. This is a great exercise for simultaneously improving puck control and balance. It should be done in a continuous motion. Moving puck control, one hand. Just as the majority of skating is performed on one leg, players mostly handle the puck with one hand as well. Practicing one-handed puck control will improve hand and forearm strength.
as well as puck mobility. Moving puck control, three crossovers carry the puck. In game situations, this skill is useful for keeping an opponent guessing. The three consecutive crossovers cause the player to move quickly from side to side. The blade of the stick is used to cup the puck as the player changes directions. Moving puck control, three crossovers, stick handling the puck. This is the same as the previous drill, except the player constantly stick handles the puck while performing the crossovers. This drill will help players develop quick feet and quick hands. Moving puck control, crossover circle, carry the puck. Here, players perform crossovers around a circle while carrying the puck on either the forehand or backhand. The puck is either pushed or pulled, depending on whether the player is going forward or backward. Moving puck control, crossover circle, stick handling the puck. Performing crossovers around a circle while stick handling is similar to the previous drill, but instead of carrying the puck, the player constantly stick handles while performing the crossovers. The puck should be handled off to the side, rather than in front of the body. Because this exercise requires the player to perform several skills in combination, it helps to improve foot speed, hand speed, and puck control coordination. Moving puck control, hands together. Although rarely used as a way of handling the puck in game situations, keeping the hands together is a method of stick handling that can be used to improve forearm strength. Players will also develop a better feel for the puck when it is handled further away from the body. Moving puck control, hands wide. Again, as with the previous drill, this is not a typical way for handling the puck, but practicing it will increase coordination and overall puck control skills. This technique really emphasizes shifting the weight from one skate to the other. It also forces the player to slide the bottom hand lower down the shaft to get the puck out wider. Moving puck control, behind body, side to side. In this exercise, the player moves the puck from side to side behind the body. When on the backhand side, a player will typically use only their top hand on the stick. This is great practice for when players in motion lose control of the puck or when receiving a pass that is behind them. Moving puck control, rotation. The term puck on a string comes from this maneuver, where the puck stays very close to the blade of the stick. It slides from the heel of the blade to the toe, and then back down the other side of the blade. As players get faster and more adept at this move, it will appear as though the puck never leaves the blade. This drill can be done out in front or off to the side. Moving puck control, stick through legs. This move is not typically used in a game, but players should practice this skill to better develop their hand-eye coordination. The drill also helps players develop a better range of motion in their hands and arms. Players would typically use this skill when they lose control of the puck and have to recover it. Moving puck control, puck through legs from back. This particular skill is normally used to deceive defensemen. The puck is taken out wide to the forehand side and behind the body 
and then the toe of the blade pulls the puck back through the legs. The back side of the blade can also be used to tap the puck through the legs. The puck can either come straight through or off the skate and up to the stick. This skill is often used when a player is receiving a pass behind the body. Moving puck control. Switch hands. This is a great exercise to improve a player's coordination and hand-eye skills. Moving puck control, toe drag, front and side. The toe drag is a very deceptive move that when performed successfully always makes the highlight reels. It requires both hand speed and coordination. The player moves the puck out to the forehand side and turns the toe of the blade downward to drag the puck closer to the body. It is the rotation of the top hand that turns the toe of the blade over. Practicing this to both the front and side of the body will develop speed and a more fluid motion. Moving puck control, body puck opposite. Body puck opposite is a very deceptive move when executed at high speed. The player moves the upper body to the opposite side of where the puck is while continuing to stick handle. Initially, practicing this maneuver around pylons is a good way for players to become more familiar with the movement. Moving puck control, body stick opposite. Body stick opposite is similar to the previous exercise, except the players no longer have pylons to guide them. Becoming more accomplished at this drill will greatly improve the range of motion in the arms. This is a great move when on the attack, because the body fake plus the puck changing sides will leave a defender guessing as to which way the attacker will go next. Moving puck control, puck in feet. There are many times during a game when players will lose control of the puck and will need to use their feet to regain control. In this move, the puck is either kicked from skate to skate or dropped to the skates and kicked back up to the stick. Moving puck control, C-cuts heel, narrow. With the weight of the body on the heels and the toes coming up, the puck is moved narrowly from side to side in front of the body. Moving puck control, C-cuts heel, wide. This is similar to the previous exercise except that here the puck is stick handled in a wider motion in front of the body. Moving puck control, slalom, narrow and wide, toe drag, combination. This is a series of many previously shown puck control skills. The player skates in a slalom pattern, alternately stick handling the puck narrow and wide and through the legs or off the skates with toe drags. Moving puck control, puck scoop, forehand. Performing the puck scoop while in motion is more difficult than while stationary, but the action is still the same. The blade of the stick is laid on top of the puck. Pressure is put on the edge of the puck to tilt it onto the blade. Next, the stick is brought backward in a circular motion toward the body. Then, with a quick upward rotation of the hands and stick, the puck stays on the forehand side of the blade as it is scooped up. Moving puck control, puck scoop, backhand. The action for the backhand puck scoop is similar to the forehand except the puck starts on the back side of the blade. With a forward movement of the puck, 
along with a quick downward rotation of the hands and stick, the puck is scooped onto the blade. Moving puck control, 360 spin, left and right. In the 360 spin left and right, the player performs a tight turn with the puck, heading into the turn by leading with the stick and the front foot to spin 360 degrees. On the player's backhand, the top hand and elbow should be held high to make a tighter turn. On the forehand, the arms have to cross over. When going backward, this can also be used as an escape move to elude a defender. Moving puck control, heel to heel skates. In performing this skill, the player opens up and glides with the heels facing each other. This is a good maneuver for seeing more of the ice while skating forward. It can also be used as an escape move to avoid contact or to sneak through a narrow opening. Moving puck control. Forehand only with pylons. Here, the puck is carried only on the forehand side of the blade. Instead of moving the puck to the backhand when going around a pylon, a toe drag is used to keep the puck on the forehand side of the blade. The puck is cupped on the forehand side when going around the next pylon. Moving puck control, forehand, one hand with pylons. In the forehand, one hand with pylons drill, the puck remains on the forehand side of the blade, but this time, the player uses only their top hand to control the stick. This is a great drill for developing soft hands. When the drill is executed while going backward, no pylons are used, but again, the puck always stays on the forehand side of the blade. Moving puck control, backhand, one hand with pylons. This skill is much more difficult to execute on the backhand than on the forehand. When approaching a pylon, the body needs to swing out wide and the puck should come almost to a stop. Once the arms follow through and catch up to the body, the player should recover the puck and repeat the maneuver around the pylons. When performing this drill backward, players skate in a slalom pattern. The puck is dragged from side to side on the backhand without ever leaving the blade. Moving puck control, puck inside pylon, off stick. In this drill, the player performs turns around a group of pylons. Instead of carrying the puck around the staggered pylons, the puck is slipped inside and the player picks it up after skating around each pylon. Moving puck control, puck inside pylon, on stick. The pattern here is the same as in the previous drill. This time, however, as the player goes around the pylons, both the puck and the stick remain on the inside. On the backhand side, the bottom hand can either stay on or come off the stick. Moving puck control, puck dots, skate straddle. Stick handling around pucks or other objects is a great way to practice the finer movements of puck control. With the skate straddling a row of pucks, the player stick handles back and forth through the puck dots. As they become older, 
players will be able to perform this drill more quickly. Moving puck control, toe drag, skates on one side. In this drill, the player keeps both skates on one side of the puck and performs toe drags through the dots. Again, the more often this skill is practiced, the more quickly the player will perform it. Moving puck control, sticks. Another way to help players improve their puck control skills is to use sticks as obstacles. With two sticks placed parallel to each other, the player stick handles forward and backward in a Z pattern. This drill is great for developing range of motion in the arms. Moving puck control, figure eights, two pylons. The figure eights two pylon drill is a great exercise for handling the puck in a confined area. The players skate in a figure eight pattern cupping the puck around each pylon. When skating forward, the arm and elbow of the top hand are held high on the backhand. The arms cross over on the forehand to assist in making a tight turn. When going backward, the puck is dragged around the pylon on both the forehand and backhand. Moving puck control figure eights, transition. The pattern for the figure eights transition drill is similar to the two pylon drill, except the players transition with open and reverse pivots at each pylon. This is a great drill for developing puck control agility. Moving puck control, fake, toe drag. The toe drag fake is a very deceptive move. The player fakes going to one side, then toe drags the puck back toward the body. This can also be done off a fake pass to the forehand side. Moving puck control, fake, flip puck. Difficult to perform, this skill is normally used when a player is cutting to either side and has to flip the puck up to get around an obstacle. This is especially difficult to execute on the backhand and at higher speeds. Moving puck control, edge control, one leg. This skill requires the player to be simultaneously in control of the puck and the edges of the skates. Performed backward here, the player alternates gliding on the inside edge of each skate while handling the puck. Moving puck control, two pucks. The two pucks drill helps players develop their coordination and agility. It is important to keep each puck constantly moving while at the same time keeping both of them under control. Moving puck control, two pucks, stick, and feet. In the next progression of the two pucks drill, the player uses the stick and the feet to control both pucks.
Passing and receiving are skills that both demand a great deal of practice. Learning these skills while stationary sets the foundation for passing and receiving in motion. A team's ability to keep possession of the puck is dependent on how well they pass and receive it. When it comes to passing and receiving, individual skills translate into team success. Stationary forehand pass. The first pass a player should learn to make is the forehand sweep pass. It's one of the most commonly used passes in hockey because it's accurate and can be used in any situation. Transferring the weight from the rear skate to the lead skate, the puck is propelled in a fluid motion toward the target by a sweeping action of the arms. The puck rolls from the heel of the blade to the toe, and the stick follows through, pointing at the target. Stationary backhand pass. The motion for the backhand pass is the same as the forehand, except the puck is on the back side of the blade. The weight of the body should transfer from the leg furthest from the receiver to the leg closest. To keep the blade perpendicular to the target, the top hand must move in front of the body. Stationary backhand pass, forehand receive. The ability to receive a pass is just as important as sending one. This drill gets players to practice passing on the backhand and receiving on the forehand. The receiving player should keep the blade on the ice, perpendicular to the oncoming puck. The puck should be received as close to the middle of the blade as possible. To control reception, cushion the puck by slightly giving with the arms as it hits the blade. Once the puck is received, it is brought in front across the body and returned on the backhand. This skill is typically used when trying to improve the angle of the pass. Stationary forehand pass, backhand receive. In the next progression, players pass on their forehand and receive on the backhand. Again, this skill is normally used when trying to improve the angle of the pass or recovering a bad pass. Stationary saucer pass, forehand. A difficult pass to master, the saucer pass requires the puck to fly through the air and land flat on the ice. To make a successful saucer pass, the puck should start on the heel of the blade with the face open. The puck is then rolled along the blade by sliding the stick in front of the body in the direction of the receiver. This causes a spinning movement of the puck that keeps it flat both in the air and on the ice when it lands. Stationary saucer pass, backhand. The backhand saucer pass is an even more difficult skill to master than the forehand. Instead of the curve being open, the back side of the blade is closed, which makes it harder to get the puck up and spinning in the air. The player will need both wrist and forearm strength to properly execute this pass. Stationary bank pass. A bank pass requires the same technique as a sweep pass, except the puck is bounced off the boards. To become an accurate passer using this technique, a player needs to practice this from various angles and positions to get a better feel for how the puck will react off the boards. This skill can also be used to pass to oneself or when going around another player. It should also be practiced on the backhand. Flip puck to partner, knock down pass back. This skill is intended to help a pass receiver develop the ability to receive an errant pass. The player can either use their glove to catch and drop the puck or their stick to knock it down out of the air. Both methods require good hand-eye coordination.
pass behind. Pull puck through legs. This is another exercise to help players receive an errant pass. Since not all passes in a game situation can be received directly on the stick, it is important to practice this skill. Placing the blade behind the body to tap or pull the puck through the legs can be done more quickly than trying to pull it in front of the body. And this way, players don't have to break stride while they're in motion. Pass behind. Off skate to stick. As shown in the previous drill, it's important for players to practice receiving passes that aren't tape to tape. In this example, using the skate blades is another great technique for recovering an errant or deflected pass. Without moving the skates, the player angles the skate blade so that the puck will hit the skate and ricochet up to the stick. Basic passing and receiving skills are best taught while standing still. Putting them in motion adds an entirely new set of challenges. This increasing level of difficulty not only sharpens a player's skills, it helps to keep them interested and enthused during their practice session. The best players in the game are efficient at passing in motion, moving to an open space, and then receiving the puck in motion. These skills are essential in becoming an all-around player. Moving forehand pass. Passing while in motion is a skill that takes time to master. The technique is the same as while standing still, except that the puck is not passed to the teammate's stick, but rather ahead of the stick, allowing the receiver to continue to skate forward to pick up the puck. Moving backhand pass. Making a backhand pass while in motion is not a skill that many players perform as well as they can on the forehand. The motion is the same as the stationary backhand pass, except again, the puck is passed ahead of the receiver while they continue forward to retrieve the pass. Lead pass. A lead pass is sent from a player who is either stationary or moving to another player already in motion or about to be in motion. The pass can be any forehand or backhand pass, but instead of sending the puck directly to the stick, the pass is sent out in front of the receiver. The receiver then either starts to skate or continues striding to pick up the pass. The distance the pass is sent ahead of the receiver depends upon how fast the receiver is skating. Moving forehand pass, receive, one touch. The one touch reception and pass is a skill that requires soft hands. The objective is to receive the puck and pass it back all in one motion. The puck shouldn't be stick handled when received, but rather cushioned by letting the momentum of the puck push the stick back. Younger players should begin practicing this at close range. Then as they become more proficient, they can gradually increase the distance. Moving backhand pass, receive, one touch. The ability to perform a one touch reception and pass on the backhand is a skill that separates the average passer from a great passer. In this case, it's the closed curve of the blade that can make it more difficult to execute. Again, the key is to cushion the puck when the pass is received. Moving saucer pass, forehand. Performing a saucer pass when in motion increases the level of difficulty. So it's important that players use the proper technique. The puck should roll from the heel to the toe of the blade by sliding the stick in front of the body. This type of pass is normally used in a game situation when passing through traffic. Moving saucer pass, backhand. Making a backhand saucer pass while in motion is probably the most difficult pass to master. To execute it consistently and properly requires a great deal of practice. 
Again, the technique is similar to performing it while stationary, except that, as with all passes in motion, the puck should be sent ahead of the receiver. The following exercises utilize various skills in combination to help players improve their techniques for passing and receiving in motion. Pairs passing. Here, two players skate down the ice, passing and receiving the puck on their forehand. One player skates forward, the other skates backward. Pairs passing. Receive backhand, return forehand. This time, players alternately receive passes on the backhand and return them on the forehand. Pairs passing, double weave. Here, two players pass the puck back and forth while skating down the ice in a weave pattern. Moving bank pass, forehand. In this skill, Players learn to elude opponents by sending forehand bank passes to themselves. This can also be used to send a breakout pass to a teammate. Moving bank pass, backhand. This time, players make bank passes with their backhand to elude opponents. Again, this is a great way to help teammates break out of the defensive zone. Pass and follow. In this skill, one player passes to a partner then crosses behind the receiver while following the direction of the initial pass. Both players alternate this passing sequence as they skate up the ice. Pass behind. Pull puck through legs. When receiving a pass from behind, players can use their stick to deflect the puck through their legs and retrieve it in front of them. Pass behind. Off skate to stick. Here, instead of using the stick, players can receive a pass from behind by using one of their skate blades to deflect the puck through their legs. Most players love to work on improving their puck control. Given sufficient opportunity to develop their stick handling, passing and receiving skills, they often see rapid improvements. Developing players should always be given time to handle the puck and become comfortable with it. They should be encouraged to be imaginative and creative. They'll never know what they can do until they try.